Hi, I'm Mr. Johnny Hopkins, and I'm here to talk to you about what is a biology. S dot canning for intelligence. So, scanning for intelligence, we're going to talk to you about the central dogma. This is the fundamentals of biology. I'm going to give you a little overview of what is a biology using the central dogma and talk to you a little bit about the basic theory and ideas behind this guy's called proteins. So, the central dogma states that DNA goes to RNA, goes to proteins. We all know this a million times over. DNA is this double helix guy that has this uh, phosphate backbone with the nucleotides that bond with each other. DNA was made up of the four bases, A, C, T, and G. Adenine, uh, cytosine, thymine, guanine. And those go into RNA, which are made of the same bases, but have just a little slightly stri uh, different structure. And that is then translated into proteins. So, process of DNA into RNA is called transcription. Transcription. And that's performed by something called an RNA polymerase. There are many different types of them, and those guys are actually proteins. And then RNA is translated into a protein by something called the ribosome, which is a complex of RNA uh, protein, actually. And that process is called translation. So, proteins are supposed to be a thing in the cell that performs its functions. They give the life to the cell. Without these proteins, the whole thing would collapse. See, proteins are the function. So, effectively, they're what gets you from getting out of bed in the morning to thinking about how your ex just posted some photo on Instagram. These things carry everything throughout the cell. Just these things are somehow able to collectively stalk your ex on Instagram just by basic molecular interactions into a whole huge idea. It, it able, it's able to give you an idea just by these small molecular interactions, which is very intriguing. And so this little central dogma, it's very fluid and very just it's this robust stupid idea that one goes to another goes to another but in fact it's actually not even close to that you have proteins uh, actually changing and telling what the DNA does you have these things called transcription factors you have RNA polymerases you have DNA polymerases you have top isomerases which all help organize and move around with epigenetic factors on this DNA all of which will be explained later. And we have proteins that attach to the RNA, and RNA modulates the proteins as well. These guys all act in tandem with each other. RNA helps modulate DNA by, do, by creating primers for, RNA, for DNA replication. There are so many different things that this basic black line of going DNA to RNA to protein, it doesn't even capture any of it. But that's the central dogma, is that DNA goes to RNA and it goes to proteins. And that happens in the cell. So that's in general what happens with the cell, DNA, RNA, and proteins. But one thing that we're forgetting here is something called lipids. Lipids are the OG, if you will. These guys are everything that defines a cell. Literally, without these guys, you couldn't define a cell. These lipids are the boundary. They separate you from them. They separate the mitochondria, being the powerhouse of the cell, from everything that's not the powerhouse of the cell. So these lipids have this ability that they take water, they keep water outside of it. So you have this little boundary, this membrane, that, nothing can, that only a few things can puncture and go through and penetrate into the cell. They keep things very, very well organized. So that's the job of lipids. They compartmentalize. These guys are most underappreciated in biology. They're not even considered in the central dogma, even though they have this entire function of their own. These guys are Tesla. These guys are your mother who would slice open, slice the uh, crust off of your bread every morning for your packed lunch. These guys are underappreciated. Now, so that's an overview of just what is a biology. 
But let's go into what is a protein. What is a protein? And we've got this thing called Anfinson's Dog and Levin's Thal's Paradox. These guys uh, are pretty much the fundamental theory of biology. So Anfinson's Dog is named after this guy named Anfinson, believe it or not, who actually received a Nobel Prize for his work. And you're going to question why real short bit. It states amino acid sequence determines protein structure, and structure determines the function. So if you take a protein, the sequence tells you its structure. So you're telling me the words in a book form the plot. It's the most intuitive statement you've ever heard in your life. And the structure determines the function. The words on the page determine the plot. This, this is the most intuitive statement you've ever heard. And the fact that it's got somebody's name attached to it, it's got this whole fancy word, makes it sound like people were really, really stupid back when this thing was uh, initially thought up. But here's the thing. The power of this statement is not the statement itself. It's its assumption, its underlying assumption that actually has the power. This thing, if somebody tells you that, you're going to slap them in the face and say, go back to the first grade. Here's what the underlying assumption is. Structure. Proteins have a structure. They're not wiggly boys. Just wiggling about, doing their own thing. No. They're not wiggly boys. But rather, they have a structure. They do certain things with this structure. They don't wiggle. Or there are wiggly proteins, but they are very specific in their wiggling, such that they have a very defined structure and uh, wiggliness. These spe specific structures allow it to perform its function. This is the power of Anthens and Sodoma. Proteins have a structure. That structure is determined by amino acids, and that structure determines the function. Like, obviously. So, instead of having wiggly boys just jumbling around, doing whatever they want, you have these strong, compact figures. Now, we have compact proteins. But, how does it get there? How does it get from wiggly boy? Because when you uh, create a protein in the ribosome, you actually create a wiggly boy, and then it has to form into this compact thing. Now, that's where Leventhal's paradox comes in. So, this is, it just makes some basic, very basic assumptions on the biology. So, let's take a 100 amino acid peptide, a protein. 100, 100 amino acids, which is just the sequence of the protein. So you have 100 of these guys, all strung along. So it's this polymer, this long chain of 100 things attached to each other. And you have two possible conformations per amino acid. And it's possible to go from, and each of those uh, conformations has, can take one picosecond to switch from one to the other. Now, what is intriguing here is that these are all some fairly basic, simple assumptions. And so this gives us a very stupid idea of how to approach the cell. This is a physics approximation which is a very stupid person approximation to just see, hey, what's going on here? So it uh, estimates the amount of time it takes for a protein to go from wiggly boy to compact boy. And it takes two times two times two, so, because you have, uh, for amino acid one, for amino acid two, two times two times two, to the, so two to the 100 power, two pico, two to the 100 power picoseconds. Picosecond is 10 times negative, 10 to the negative 12th power, which that comes out to about, you know, 10 to the 10 years. You know, the uh, nice span of the universe. No, no, no. So that, that's not true. So this paradox states that essentially it would take forever for a protein to fold, but it would take that long of time. So there's definitely not this random wiggliness that happens to get it to a compact structure. This wiggliness is not an intrinsic property of a protein. Instead, it has to go along some sort of a way and determine a structure by some other way rather than randomness. 
And that's what the whole idea behind this is. It goes to a compact structure through a free energy gradient. Energy derives this compact structure. And that structure gives the function of the cell. And that function of the cell leads to anxiety and insomnia in all of us. So, that's the basics of the central dogma and the basics of the ideas of a protein. So a protein, is, so you go from DNA, so you have a cell, you have a nucleus, the nucleus has the DNA, the DNA goes to RNA, and the RNA makes proteins. And those proteins have a specific function in the cell because of their native fold, their conformation. And what about everything else in the cell? And that's what we're going to uh, talk about next. We're going to talk about the, um, the amino acid structure and the structure of proteins themselves, which will give us a way to describe the function of the cell. I'm Mr. Johnny Hopkins. Thank you.